There are bad Slytherins out there, but not all Slytherins are bad. Hello, my Slither Bays. So today is a very special day because it is the official Slytherin Pride Day. Yesterday, Hufflepuff had theirs. Tomorrow, Gryffindor will have theirs. And the day after that will be Ravenclaw's. But today, on March 21st, it's our day. So I figured why not hang out with you guys and answer a bunch of Slytherin type questions. And so a couple weeks ago, I asked you guys to ask me a bunch of Slytherin related questions and you guys delivered. Just letting you guys know that I have not pre-planned my answers for these questions. So I might be all over the place. Please excuse me if I am. Let's just, prepare our wands and get cracking on the Slytherin questions, shall we? So this question was actually asked a couple of times. It's who is the best Slytherin in your opinion? I have a couple of favorites like Slughorn and Draco. I would say that this is probably the most popular opinion, but Severus Snape would be the best Slytherin in my opinion because he's a more well-rounded Slytherin. Like you don't just see the bad in him. I feel like he has a really broad character arc. That, and I would also say that Lita Lestrange has become one of my favorite Slytherins just by what I saw in Crimes of Grindelwald. Is ambition the only thing one must have to be a Slytherin? or it's just one of the traits of a Slytherin. I think that ambition is just one of the traits of being a Slytherin. I don't think ambition and determination is exactly a solely defining factor. If you don't have that, then you're not a Slytherin. I don't think that. The house that you choose is actually what you want to become. The values that you hold more dear to your heart. Sometimes you you want to be ambitious or determined, but you're not actually that, but you want to be a Slytherin because that'll teach you how to be those things, maybe. Um, I don't know, food for thought. So this one is like a two-part question. So it says, what do you find the best qualities about being a Slytherin? besides the qualities usually listed to describe Slytherins. Honestly, I actually think one of the best qualities of a Slytherin, of being a Slytherin, is that you have that element of surprise because I've never made a video about this before, but I actually get along the most with Slytherins. When you like crack open a Slytherin a little bit, there's like a real deep soul inside that person. The second part of the question, and maybe how to define yourself in terms of being Slytherin if you feel kind of in between houses. So I feel like we all have had that where we just don't know if we belong in this house or in that house. My answer to that is always whatever feels the most right to who you are, go with that one. And obviously my subscribers know exactly how much I've like teeter tot teeter-tot-totted is that the word? Uh, like I've gone back and forth between seeing myself as a Slytherin and seeing myself as a Hufflepuff. And I also do have strong elements of a Ravenclaw as well, but I don't really, I don't know. I never really saw myself as a Ravenclaw. Uh, the biggest thing I would say, if you're bouncing between houses and you're not sure which one you are, go with whatever your gut is telling you. So just listen to your gut, pick whichever house you want, really. It's your choice anyways. What's your favorite thing about being a Slytherin? I love how badass Slytherin is. And I love how it makes me feel. It makes, being a Slytherin, there's something very, it sounds strange to people who aren't into any of this stuff, but there's something very empowering about it. If you were a prefect of Slytherin House, what do you think you'll use your power on? <sighs> this sounds awful and maybe, um, but I'm just gonna be really real about this. For me personally, I don't know what exactly I would do as a prefect, but I do think that I would love to be a prefect just because I feel like more people would listen to me. And this comes from my own feelings of like other people are, are drowning my voice. And I, I guess that's why I started a YouTube channel so that, you know, I could just have my thoughts focus into one video and then have 
whoever wants to listen will listen. But oftentimes in life, I feel like I'm like fighting to be heard. And I don't know if it's because I'm a certain gender or like I'm a certain age. I don't know. I just want to be taken seriously. What do you think of Draco Malfoy? So Draco, Draco, Draco. <sighs> I feel like a lot of people ask me about Draco Malfoy for some reason. Um, okay, so Draco. I really love Draco as a character. I despise him. Like, there was always something about Draco that really pissed me off. But there was also that side of him that I couldn't help but feel sorry for. And, and he's just really just a spoiled brat. But also I look into his family life and I can only imagine how much pressure Draco had to live up to his father's standards, his father's expectations. For me, the book that really made me see him differently was The Half-Blood Prince. Now, was I one of the girls who fangirled over Draco Malfoy? No. <laughs> Another Draco Malfoy question. Who would Draco end up with if it was your choice? Is this my cue to say Harry? <laughs> don't think I don't know about those fan fictions out there. I wouldn't change who he ended up with. I like him with Astoria. I feel like his wife really changed him as a person. I wouldn't change anything for Draco. So how did you come up with the fact that you belong to Slytherin? Do you feel it inside yourself? I had no clue what house I belonged to before. It wasn't anything that I thought of, actually. And I had taken a kind of Pottermore type of quiz before. That quiz um, sorted me into Hufflepuff. And so I kind of went along just thinking that I was a Hufflepuff. And because people would be like, oh, you're a Hufflepuff. But um, it wasn't until Pottermore kept sorting me into Slytherin and I was like, wait, I've... Because I never put Slytherin on the, like, in the forefront of my mind, you know? I never really thought I was a Slytherin. Slytherin wasn't anything that, it never crossed my mind. I now feel I am very much a Slytherin. I just, I feel it. Who is your favorite Death Eater? I would definitely say Bellatrix Lestrange because she's just so nasty. <laughs> She was just crazy. If you were made the head of Slytherin House, what would be the first change you would make to better the reputation of Slytherin as a whole? Oh, that's a hard question, honestly. So let's say I'm, I'm head of Slytherin House. I don't think I would have any favoritism towards Slytherin. I wouldn't be giving Slytherin extra points or taking away from other houses their house points to so that Slytherin can have a leg up. I would want things to be fair and square and I would want each student to earn what they get. I would much rather be more like a Professor McGonagall than a Severus Snape in that aspect because McGonagall was tough on everybody, even Gryffindors. Not sure if that answered that question, but yeah. <laughs> what do you think your life at Hogwarts would be like as a Slytherin or your life as a student there in general? This is a big question because it's, it could, it could honestly be anything. And I feel like if I, if I were to just give like a brief summary of what my life would be like at school in Hogwarts, I might be like a half-blood in Slytherin, but that's kind of frowned upon, so I don't know. I would have a hard time fitting in if I'm half-blooded, so maybe I would keep that a secret. Maybe I would tell people that I'm actually pure blood, but I'm not. Ooh. <laughs> and I would be going into school with my twin since you know, this we're imagining here and we would both be put into Slytherin, which we have both been put into Slytherin. We would be very different from the Fred and George situation. Like we're not jokesters or anything like that. I would probably be one of those students that is like really dedicated in what I want to do in my future. So if any like boys came in, I would just be completely disinterested. <laughs> Until maybe if there's like a Yule Ball or something, then I would have like a little boy to go to the dance with. It wouldn't last because it's basically high school. I don't think I would actually just be friends with Slytherins. I think maybe like 
a small group, a small core group of my friends would be Slytherins. I would be a social, a very social Slytherin. I feel like I would be one of those students at Hogwarts that would be in a group of friends where one of them is very impulsive and would drag me into things that I'm just like, I don't wanna be here, why am I doing this? We're gonna get into so much trouble, like a bit of like a Hermione type. I feel like I would be really invested in classes like divination and astronomy and classes like care of magical creatures. Also herbology would be one that I, I'm kind of curious of even like when I just think about it now. In terms of Quidditch, I actually don't think that I would be involved in Quidditch. During summer breaks, I would go into my family's magic clothing shop and work there. Career-wise, I'm not sure where I'd want to be, but I feel like I'd either be like a healer of some sort, or I would be doing something with magical creatures, or something maybe more like magical clothing. <laughs> I don't know. Or making wands, that would be great. So yeah, that would be the gist of my life. I would probably need to think about it a lot more to really know exactly what I would be and what I would do, but that I think that's the general sense. So that is it, my beautiful Slytherin army. I am so thankful for you guys. Everyone who submitted questions, thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed listening to my answers for them. Whatever your Hogwarts house is, I hope you guys have a great Pride Day, whether it was yesterday or tomorrow or the day after tomorrow or today. Thank you so much for watching and getting to this point. Happy Slytherin Pride Day, everybody. Much love, guys. Bye.